let's shift to uh, Facebook. And uh, mm -hmm. you guys uh, have been working with them with a white labeled, uh, white listed, excuse me, uh, player. Mm -hmm. uh, how are publishers uh, using Facebook? Not, not to you know, both on the social side of ref of, of liking and recommendations, yeah. but right. also the opportunities to use Facebook to use a player on yeah. their pages and. That's right. Is it hard to get your player approved, and what are the values there? Well, so Facebook obviously um, doesn't want to allow any arbitrary code to run inside the Facebook environment because it presents security challenges for them, um, and it just puts their business model at risk and trust relationships at risk. And so they don't whitelist everybody's player to run inside of their environment. Um, we're fortunate to be one of the, the one of the uh, the players for, for video content that is whitelisted by Facebook. And what that means is that when our content is shared through Facebook, it appears directly in the social stream or can appear directly in the social stream, or it can also appear on Facebook pages and fan pages and such. So if, if a news organization wants to build out a presence inside of the Facebook environment that they can draw people to and present their content without forcing people to leave the Facebook environment and go somewhere else, they can do that and incorporate video content really well. And they can also monetize that content with advertising as long as they're not directly targeting Facebook users specifically. And so it gives an environment. I, it's, it's interesting how it's fragmenting because it used to be you, know, you kind of have a website, you had a flagship property, and that's where all of the attention was. But now um, you're going to have outposts on Facebook, you're going to have you know, a Twitter presence, you're going to have a presence in LinkedIn, you're going to have a presence in your apps and other environments. It's much more you know, balkanized in terms of where your content appears. That presents both opportunities and challenges. We're trying to help publishers make sense of it. And on a related matter, on the issue of syndication, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, we we did an interview with uh, the head of digital for the Wall Street Journal Digital mm -hmm. Network uh, mm -hmm. last week, and mm -hmm. she said that half of their video views are through syndication through mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. places. Um, to me, that's been a big change for publishers who said, well, you know, we're we're the Wall Street Journal, or you know, we're a big newspaper. Right. We want to have the views on our site and, you know, sort of mm -hmm. embedded uh, contextually with our articles. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. It seems like things maybe have changed. Um, th in other words, what is the opportunity for syndication and where is that going for, for news publishers now? Well, one of the biggest things that we hear from our publishers is that they need more content. Nobody feels like they have enough content. And because the fact is video content on any website makes that website more attractive to the search engines, it makes it stickier, and it increases the monetization value of every page. So if that's the case, why wouldn't you have video on every page? And the answer is usually we don't have enough content. That creates an incredible, uh, unsatiable desire for more content. Syndication is one way to get more content into your site, so everybody wants that. And ultimately, if you're branding your content appropriately and you have the right revenue relationships or revenue sharing relationships worked out, it's a way that you can grow your audience and build your brand in a way that's win-win for everybody. I think ultimately, you know, hopefully the world eventually will have enough content that everybody has, you know, enough on their own sites. But that day is not going to be anytime soon. So the, uh, and one last question, what are the opportunities now around, you know, digital news video and, you know, mm -hmm. the opportunities... Um, in terms of both platforms and in terms of uh, user interest in consuming video and mm -hmm. I mean I'm sure you guys are bullish but where do you see the growth happening now or in the next year well we see incredible growth continued growth on the on PCs for organizations as they get more video on more pages and infuse their sites more directly with video if you I mean we look at every news organization site as uh, you know, we kind of count the pages that have video and the pages that don't. And we regard every page that doesn't have video as a naked page. It just is not an optimized page. And so that we're going to see continued growth there as organizations infuse their sites. But I think the bigger story is actually the way that they're driving that content through apps, mobile websites, other types of platforms, smart TV platforms, and other things. Get, getting a chance to get into the living room, getting a chance to get more but screen time with the consumers to reaching devices. That's where we see really massive growth going forward. Awesome. All right, Jeff, thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much.